Welcome. Oh, it is working. Oh, it was never muted. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know how much was heard. <laughs> I, gas and burn! Oh, yeah. hey, let's go. <laughs> Two class for gas and burn. Okay, this is going to be a good night. Um, But shouts out to Maya and... Logan. Log. Logan. I also want to <laughs> test if you can hear Rose. I think you can hear us. I think we can all hear us. I think we're fine. Um... Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a we have a pretty exciting episode. It's not really long, which is fine. It's fine by me. Um, we've had a long day, so yeah. that's why it's not gonna be super long. But it should be super fun. Um, because we have some good ex we have like the best experiment we have yet to have, I think. And uh yeah, it should be exciting. Uh we both have our safety glasses slash goggles. And uh we have this geode. Um, if you don't know what Geoda is, stick around. If you do, then you know that we could be get lucky with some cool stuff. And, uh, I hope we get lucky. We've paid 14 bucks for this thing. $14 for one rock. <laughs> but that's not too bad. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, anyways, um, let me know if you can't hear one of us. This is only our second time doing this in person, me and Rose, in the same room. And uh, it's, it's going to become the frequent here in about a month, mm -hmm. which is only like five more episodes, six more episodes. Yeah, I won't be here next week. I go on vacation with my family, so yeah. it'll be another week without without Rose. I'm gonna go solo. Yeah, but I won't be able to watch either because I don't. I won't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, she's going on a cruise. So, mm -hmm. um, but anyways, um, I'll I'll do another animal special or something. Yeah, that was cool. But anyways, without further ado, welcome back to Science HD, um, the show where we just talk about our favorite interests in science. And uh, this past week, we uh, there was a huge thing in science. Pretty exciting. It's history it's made. Stuff. History made. Um, <laughs> if you are aware of anything science, I think everyone turned their heads when NASA re launched, not released, launched a s space telescope called the James Webb Space Telescope. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably like their most expensive thing that they've done or something. Yeah. And it was they like dropped it, and everyone was like, <gasps> you know, they yeah. dropped it. Um, and then they were they were like, it's fine. And then they released it, and it's supposed to do what, Rose? Do you know? It's supposed to um, see see further into space than like the Hubble was able to. So this te uh, this telescope, we'll get more into it later. I don't want to spoil too much. It can see like I think like four hundred million or billion million. <laughs> I'm gonna fact check that years um, right after the Big Bang. So its photos are more clear. The lens is bigger. It, it's uh, farther out in orbit than the Hubble is because it can't withstand uh, warmer temperatures. So the Hubble is closer to Earth's orbit in a different location than the um, James Webb. The Hubble being another telescope. The first telescope. The OG telescope. The OG. I actually don't know if it is because there's another one. I think it's called oh, the Sputnik telescope. That one might be the actual OG. I don't know. OG Oshmi. Sorry, I totally forgot I started this episode without actually having the slides up. Um, no, this is not a hippo testicle. I'm so late to reading that comment, but it is not a hippo testicle. <laughs> it is definitely... I'm pulling up the slides right now, so I'm... There we go, baby. Oh my god, they're so big. Um, that's great. That's huge. <laughs> okay, boom, we're good. So yeah, these are not hippo. It's not a hippo testicle, but it's probably similar size. I actually don't know. I've never seen a hippo testicle. Makes me makes me curious. I should do like a testicle segment next week. Maybe that's what I could do, like animals with the biggest nuts, or like do a game which, like, which animal do you think has this, like, which nuts? I don't In know. In fact, it's never the gorilla. The gorilla does not have large nuts. Yeah. If you're ever wondering. Let's. This is a. If you're here <laughs> this week. Yeah. If you're here this week, you have an advantage for next week. Um, gorillas have the smallest nuts between gorillas, humans, and apes. They have the smallest ones. But anyways, uh, without further ado, first segment of Science HD, it's history made. We just said what history has been made. It's the James Webb. Now, here's what the telescope looks like. But before we get into the telescope, who is James Webb? Okay, so James Webb was actually, I think, like the second like administrator to NASA. So I was doing a quick reading on him, like super quick reading on him before we started the show, and what it sounds like is that he was like, <laughs> he did a lot for NASA because he really pushed the idea of like space exploration. So during his um, time, he was really into like um, getting robots into space, like pre-astronauts so that we can get out there and like see more things. 
so he was really into like space probes and everything. Right. But um, no, let me do a let me do a quick read, and so I'm not throwing. Yeah. So it says. Webb's vision of a balanced program resulted in a decade of space science research that remains unparalleled today. Just during his tenure, NASA invested in the development of robotic spacecraft would explore the lunar environment so astronauts could do so later. So then he retired um, in 1969, I believe, right before the moon landing. Um, so they wanted to honor his time at NASA and name the space telescope after him because he's <laughs> done a lot for the development and just their um, vision and what NASA should do and be. Yeah, that's a long time after. Is he dead or alive? I think he's still alive. I never saw, like, a, you know how, like, on Wikipedia they have, like, the born dead. Yeah. There was no end date. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I think we're looking Still okay. kicking. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I was about uh, to say. I don't know. He's dead. That's a long time right, after. He, Man, rip. But I feel he like gotta, if you, maybe he is dead. I didn't look far into it. I was just like, that doesn't Here, I'll look it up. Bring, for James Webb research, this is very, like, quick, like, overview. Try to figure out what I could see. I mean, if you <laughs> look up his name and it doesn't say dead. Right, but then you get James Webb telescope stuff. Oh. So it, it kind of, like, muddles what I know about the actual James, James Webb. Webb person. <laughs> yeah, he died. 19, uh, 1992. <laughs> long, long time ago. It wasn't even close. I mean, I thought that was kind of weird, because I feel like they usually don't name things after people who are still kicking it. Yeah, I feel like they don't. Unless you're Neil Seaboard. Yeah, but he he found elements. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, I feel like the names only, for. He was the are only you talking about like the buildings, or are you talking about like satellites? Because I feel like they're two different things. I just feel like for most things, if you name if you name something after someone, it's usually because they're dead and you like think they were a cool person. Usually. Yeah. Um, and I brought up Neil usually. Seaboard because he's the only scientist that knew he had an element named after him before he died. So, yeah. Like, I Einstein was far gone by the time they named Einsteinium to be an element on the periodic table. And Seaborg is it's also... also... What? Gonna say it? You're going to say from it. from the UP. He's from <laughs> Michigan. And he, yeah, and I guess he's, he's not like everyone knows what the UP is. He was born about. 15 minutes away from our university. Yeah. And he found, like, multiple elements on the periodic table. And has Seaborgium. SG, I think. I think. Might be SG. Uh, that's the element. But anyways, that's besides the point. James Webb. Jeez, yeah. that's a tangent. Cool guy. We're, we're tangent people. Um, <laughs> but yeah, James Webb, very cool dude, and they got this telescope. I don't remember the exact price. Might be in the billions. Might be seven billion dollars. Oh, let's see. I have the. There's this website, Webble te- or Webble, <laughs> Webtelescope.org <laughs> that has like a bunch of like information and facts about. Um, the James Webb, which I found really helpful because it has like a quick fact section, so you can like pick like all your quick questions, like what is the mission of it, who is James Webb, yeah, which areas of science will Webb explore. There's a lot of really cool things. Um, how is Webb powered? Powered by an onboard solar array. It also says on here that it's only meant to last at most ten years. Like they're thinking like if stuff happens to it, it's only gonna last five years up in orbit. And yeah. Then, so then that's another thing. Like on TikTok right now, if you're on the science side of TikToks, so you'll get TikToks that's like the Hubble Space Telescope all jealous with this James Webb because it's taking this job. Mm. But it's not it's not meant to replace the Hubble. Um it's meant to compare? Yeah, it's just it's just gonna help us see a little bit further. But I think how long has the Hubble been up there? Do you know? Long time, I don't know. Yeah, okay. I wanna look it up. I'm not very much into astronomy. Because um it's cool, if though. that's only meant to last ten years but I guess, like, the Mars rover wasn't, wasn't supposed to last that long, and it's still right. pushing. Yeah. Even though, I was really confused by that, because in 2018, 2019, it died on Mars, and it said, like, my battery is getting low, and it's getting dark, and then it died. But now it's still kicking. Cause, I mean, it's solar-powered, but it was, like, Mars during... Mars 2, though. Well, now, now there's, there's Mars Curiosity, and now there's Mars Perseverance. And then there's the Perseverance has a little helicopter called Ingenuity. Yeah, I remember seeing a video of Ingenuity going up like 10 feet and then dropping down. Yeah. I don't know how long that thing will last. But Especially with like sandstorms. It's but yet another tangent. Yeah. <laughs> what was I... Oh, how I don't remember what you're looking up. That's why I'm like... I'm like, we gotta be aware of our tangents, man. <laughs> this is getting bad. Then up in um, space. But anyways, here's what... Just in case of all those flat earthers slash science deniers, uh, if you want a real picture since that last picture was I don't think it was real... Um, here's a real picture of the James Webb telescope on Earth. Yeah, it's very big. It's actually, it's 1,550 pounds on Earth. 
I read that number earlier and it stuck with me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So it's very it's very large. Um, let's see. Mm-mm-mm. Very large. And it looks is four hundred. Cool. It can see four hundred million years post Big Bang, well, not pre. I heard that there was something that did see pre Big Bang, but I don't. I think that would be like more up there if you did because like. I don't think it has seen pre Big Bang. No, yet. there's something that saw. Um, it like saw radio, thirteen like, billion years beef. Thirteen billion years ago. It's not like it. There's a there's something that exists. I think that saw like um. It's some kind of like a radio waves that is emitted like pre Big Bang. So like it's kind of like a like a how in thermal energy or thermal colors like red means a certain thing and blue means a certain thing. So like if we could see past the Big Bang and it's like not past the Big Bang, if we can look out into the universe and see like the blue thermo color or whatever, then that means it's like shrinking or expanding, which like would support if the universe is expanding or not, which is, like, a whole different discussion. But I just think that there's something else that, like, can see further than even the James Webb. I don't think that's necessarily true, because I haven't fact-checked myself and, like, looked hard enough into it. Huh. But I've heard... But I, I, I feel like I've heard something brush on this. I have no idea. I don't know either. Um, Gas and Burn says, Flat Earthers are trying to say that Georgia Guidestones prove the Earth is flat, and the reason they were bombed is to hide the fact clown i don't know what the guidestones are i don't know either. i've never heard of that <laughs> i mean they're yeah they're probably sorry bourbon uh probably bond for so many other reasons maybe even more than one but i don't know what those are those could be anything yeah i don't know either regardless um i want a point i wanted to bring up about the james webb like design of it is it looks very honeycomb y. Mm -hmm. Now, the strongest shape in the world is a triangle. And what is a hexagon made out of? A series of triangles, six of them. If you were to cut it up evenly, or just cut it up at all, but six triangles, three on top, three on the bottom. Now, I think it's not coincidence that it is made out of like a honeycomb structure. Oh, it's because. That's a pretty strong shape. Like, if you were to look at this, it looks like the James Webb is made out of a series of... You can count those up. I don't know. Oh, that looks like 6, and then 4, 8, 12, so 18 he hexagons. And then the whole entire thing looks like a hexagon. It says on here, too, quickly, that... Well, one of the, one of the first things that pops up is that it allows each mirror to fit perfectly together with the least amount of dead space in between. Well, that look, that's perfect. Right. Also, I think, just like thinking on my own, if it's the strongest shape, maybe that, that it provides even more strength in its structure itself. Right. Just like bees. That's why bees make hexagon cells for their um, hives. And also, uh, an important part for its structure is that, that you can't... Just launch the scene up to space how you see it in this photo. Like, it has to be... <laughs> they did it by, Fold like, it. folding it up. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that when it says, like, the least amount of dead space in between, if you did other shapes and you tried folding it up, when you fold it back out, it won't cover as much surface area as the hexagons do. Yeah. That's crazy how they do this. That's, like, insane if you think about it. Imagine being, like, one of the, like, top engineers for this. I know. That's who, crazy. Who are the top engineers? Why hasn't that been? You know how, like, you see that photo of the woman who, like, is standing next to the stack of papers... Who's like we're just like responsible for like the one of, like a big chunk of like the lunar landing or something, and no. then you see the woman who's like <laughs> taking the photo with the first star of the black hole, and like nobody gets hype. You know, like the, you don't hear anything about the woman. Hey, you don't hear like anything the about the people that do the dirty work. It's not. The, it's not the people that do the dirty work that get the recognition. It's the people that do the cool stuff. Cool stuff to the general public. I'm not saying that stuff is not cool. It's like name the guy who name the third guy on the on the Apollo mission that landed on the moon. Um, Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and... Oh, See? Michael Young. Is that right? I don't know. See, I forget. I don't know. I think it might be. Hmm? Oh my gosh, that's a whole paragraph. Oh, what is up, DC, my boy? Uh, we're just talking about the latest science history, and we're going to open up this geode. So, if you're done streaming for the night, uh, just lurk, and then once you hear a hammer smash rock come back because I feel like my bet is that he's gonna hit this thing like we're gonna wrap it up on the towel because the guy that 
Oh, okay. well, let's get to it. Okay, okay. I, I don't want to spoil it. Oh, wait, I want to go back We only back have so much content. We talked, <laughs> <laughs> we talked about how big this thing was. So it's um 21 feet in diameter. Each of the 18 segments is 4.3 feet. So, and realistically, one of those little hexagons is almost, like, just under my height. Oh, Because I'm 5'2". Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a tall, not, not a tall person. So they're 5 feet? <laughs> you said 5 feet? No, they're just, they're 4. 4.3. Oh. So that's... So. 4.3 feet, um, for people who maybe aren't in America, it's 1.3 meters, and 6.6 .6 meters in diameters. Damn, that's just big. Like, I mean, look at it compared to those humans. Yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty insane. Um, oops. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> the history that has been made this past weekend was, Hubble Space Telescope was doing this, it was released months and months ago. But it was doing that whole time traveling. Um, and it was traveling to a certain spot where it could take a picture. And the same, some of the same pictures as the Hubble Space Telescope. I don't have comparison images like I should. But if you look up Hubble Space Telescope versus James Webb, there's plenty of pictures. And it's cool because it's just like, it's almost, some of the pictures kind of look like low res versus high definition. Right. And then um, some of them just look completely different. But... Here's the first picture that was released, I think, yesterday, and then today, Tuesday, uh, what, what is it, July 12th, Tuesday, July 12th, at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, they released more, uh, but this was the first picture, and this is very similar to the Hubble Space Telescope, and you might even be like, hey, that's the Hubble Space Telescope picture, but there's a, a few differences. A lot of it looks the same, even to me, like, I'm just like, oh, this looks exactly the same, kind of boring. But, if you look closely, there looks like smeared. Like, some of the lights look smeared. It's warped. Now, all of the lights you see that have, um, I guess, flares on it, that's the best way to describe it, uh, basically points that point out with light, those are stars. Everything you see has those points of light shining out. Just like if you were to look at a light and squint your eyes a little bit. That stuff. Now, everything that looks more fuzzy is a galaxy, right? It's a galaxy. Yep. Now, those, there's galaxies that don't look smeared at all, and then there's some towards the middle of it that look smeared like this. That's my best way of describing it. Yeah. And those well, ones are, do you know all those? I do not know. So, I think those ones are, like, the furthest ones away. That and, makes sense if they're red. Yeah, and they're bending space is what it is, and that's why it's smeared. And that's, they're just so far away, and that there's something they, special about them that they're just bending space. Are they that's bending what, space or is it light? like refracted now you're asking me space. questions that i do not know the answers to because yeah i don't i'm not an astronomer well because if it's if it's taking in light i don't think the light is necessarily bending space the light is reacting to the curvatures in space yeah, time something like that so the, the light i think the light's refracted but then i think that the way that the lens absorbs the light is also responsible for the spherical well smear there's a difference between the ones that aren't smeared like that and then the ones that are and that's because of the position of where they are in space it's not just the lens because all these stars are getting the same lens so it's kind of like a control yeah um so it's the di it's the difference of how far they are in space also i'm going to read the chat real quick because gas and burn is telling it's us about guide stones so according to gas and burn a viewer a uh what is it called a loyal viewer says the georgia guide stones were built and revealed in 1980 it's a formation of five stones, which tracks the North Star and the Sun at all times of the year through a slit in the stonework. On four out of five of the stones, it has a guide to humanity written in eight different major languages. What the hell? How big are these stones? Um, it is unknown who exactly built the stones as they used a fake name, but among the ten guides, it says humans must be kept below five million population in constant balance with nature. So this is really philosophical, I feel like. I feel, I feel, I feel like it's really so philosophical, right? Or something along those lines where it's not... Um, I wouldn't say philosophical, but like historic. Um, and then... Well, it almost the, sounds like someone made it up and just right, put the, it there. The actual thing written on the stone itself, like if you just took what was written off the stone and tried reading it, that would sound like philosophy, but I think the actual structure itself is not philosophical. There might be like some Could science in tracking the metaphysical philosophy. 
maybe. I don't know. I don't yeah. know if that falls It's the something other than, like, outside of science, I guess, because I guess the only s- science in here would be it's a formation that tracks the North Star and the sun at all times. Right, but then there's the guide to humanity part. Yeah, and then that's where it gets... Philosophical. Philosophical to me. But anyways, uh, right up Flat Earther Alley right there to start conspiracy theories about this. The fact the stones track the North Star... So perfectly every year throughout the year of 42 years. Yeah, that's a little weird. I know there's patterns within calendars, even like the calendar we have. And technically, um, I think the calendar we have is not actually accurate in how many times the Earth spins or goes around the sun in a year. It's like not accurate. We're actually, the new year doesn't start until like four days after the actual new year, if we want to be. That's what I heard from Neil deGrasse Tyson. Great guy. But. Um, what was I just about to say to you? I don't know, but I thought it was something I wanted to say. Oh yeah, Stonehenge. Oh. Sorry. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> no, it's, reg- it's regarding this, not, not the Stonehenge. Oh, stone. yeah. Stonehenge is also a sundial, basically. I'm pretty sure. Isn't it? That's what it sounds like. Similar, but a sundial. It, it sounds you know, similar to Stonehenge, oh, because Stonehenge is, like, made up of just rocks, but it's not just random rocks. It's actually, like... On certain times of the year, the sun lines up perfectly with these rocks, and it's not just because it's randomly put in the middle of a field. But, yeah, re- re- do more stuff on that. What were we about to say about this actual topic? Oh, so, um, this photo. This photo is the equivalent of that is as if you took a grain of sand and held it at arm's distance, and, like, lo- like that's the photo that this, like... Oh. I can't think of how to phrase this right. If you were to hold a grain of sand out at arm's length, (laughs) that's the size, that's how much this photo is capturing. Yes. Ah, Perfect. So as much as you're seeing in there, looks like a great desktop picture, that's how much this photo is capturing. Links cannot be sent in here unless you're VIP guest member, which I need to make you VIP, you're always in here, so. But anyways, uh, that's besides the point. Yeah, so grain of salt. Or sand, not salt, sand. Same thing. <laughs> um, well, salt's probably bigger, but... Yeah, so uh, one really cool thing that this telescope is able to do is it's going to be able to sense um, oxy- oxygen level levels on um, closer exoplanets. And it should be able to uh, read um, organic matter levels. What's an exoplanet? Do you know what an exoplanet is? Exoplanet is just a planet outside of our solar system. Oh, okay, so a planet outside of our solar system. Pretty, pretty sure. Okay. So what you're saying is, I can hold part of I can hold part of the galaxy. Yeah, at arm's length uh, as a grain of sand. <laughs> I mean, no, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to find th- I, there. That was a question on this, and I was like, "That's really cool," because like, I don't think anyone's ever asked about that. Direct imaging. I don't remember what I have next. Oh, okay. So it's equipped with sensitive spectrographs. So it'll be able to detect oxygen and other organic molecules in the atmospheres of nearby exoplanets. The molecules reveal clues to the potential hab... Oh. So you're hab- telling me that di- James hab- Webb will do this. Habitability. <laughs> of Habitability. Yeah. So in order to find another Goldilocks zone planet, meaning a planet that could be possibly habitable... Habitable? Mm-hmm. Habitable? Yeah, say it really fast. I think it's habitable. Fast? If you don't know how to say a word, my, my usual... Like, rule of thumb is if you say it kind of fast and confidently and just keep going, nobody's really going to question you. Like, it might be like, what? And then they forget about it and they move on. <laughs> <laughs> or you just say both possibilities. Habitable, habitable. Um, really fast, I don't know. I don't know but anyways, you get what I mean. If we, could, if we could live on a planet, it's in the Goldilocks zone. Because what is the Goldilocks zone? Oh, a planet that's too big? Nope. A planet that's too small? Nope. A planet that's just right for us to be able to live on it, like Earth? Then that's the Goldilocks, and that's why it's called that. Um, but yeah, I think what you're saying is this detects if... Oxygen and organic molecules in the atmosphere. Cool. Yeah, which is kind of neat. But that's also kind of sad, because like I said, the thing's not expected to go beyond 10 years. Which I looked it up, the Hubble Space Telescope was uh, released in 1990. So it's been a hot minute, and I think that was only supposed to be a 15-year mission. Hmm. So it's gone over by... What? Seven? What year is it? <laughs> Here's 2022. I don't remember what the year you just said. 1990. 1990, 2022, that's 32 years. You know, I love math, but quick math like, Dude, is not my thing. I well, can, I you can know what's not my thing is year math. Calculus, but 
<laughs> even if I'm right or like wrong, math. I hate math within years because I can never do it. Like, oh, I was born in 1983. How old is someone that's born in 1983? I have no idea off the top of my head. I have to like. I have if to they're born in 1983, put in my I calculator. Act as if it was 1980, and then like subtract two years at the end when I figure it out. Or like, I just I think of. I can work well with even nice numbers. <laughs> or you just think of what year it is now. So 82 would be 40, right? What year are they born in? 80, 83? 83. So, 40. 41. Yeah. No, 40. No. 39. 39. <laughs> <laughs> See? Well, that's what I'm it saying. Itself is, uh, to watch, like, us trying to do that quick math. Okay. So, anyways, next picture. Uh, whether we're prepared for it or not. <laughs> this is what James Webb took a snap of. Now, mind you, um, this is not just taken with an ordinary lens. This is seeing into the infrared. A light spectrum that we're not able to see with our eyes. So basically, we've invented a machine, which is not the first time we invented a machine like this, but we invented a machine that is able to convert one spectrum of light to our spectrum of light, not just like any other spectrum. It's like to the visible light. If you don't know what electromagnetic spectrum is, I suggest you research in it. Or not research, but just look into it, and then you'll understand. It's taking it from one spectrum of light that could be visible in even other animals. Here's biology, baby. Bring it back. Some animals are able to only see certain spectrums of light. Others are able to see, I think, maybe even multiple. Bears can yeah, see into like the, the ultraviolet. The mantis shrimp. That one, like, shrimp, you know, that can see a lot of colors. No. It has, like, it has, like seven, seven... I want to say, like, we see three primary colors because of certain, like, some in our eyes, but, like, they have seven. So I see seven, like, primary colors. Yeah. What is that? I feel like a lot of other people probably know what I'm talking about because that was one of those things I was like back on Tumblr back when that was cool. And I guess a lot of the weird, <laughs> with the weird science stuff that I learned on Tumblr really stuck with me for like my entire life. Tumblr. But there is. There's like a rainbow mantis, or a rainbow mantis shrimp. And then when it like punches through the air with its little crab hand or shrimp hand and it's like really hot because it moves really fast, but it can see a lot of really cool colors or something. Huh. Fact check. Never heard Do of a rainbow mantis. This, but it is a thing. <laughs> Never heard of a mantis shrimp. Never heard of it. Nope. I have not. I don't know. But um, this is called... Sorry, I'm reading it off the oh, screen. Uh, I think it's Corin Corina. Corina. Corina Nebula. Corina. Corina Nebula. Fast and confident. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it, yeah, it's a nebula. So a nebula is. is like a birthing ground for future stars. So this ground. is what this is like. This is a star nursery. It's a, a little star nursery. Where some might be formed. I think those are really pretty. You see them a lot in um, telescope photos. I don't know. They're yeah, they're just pretty cool. They're cool. This is the nursery for stars. Have you ever seen the John Mulaney skit where he's like, "This could be a um, oh look at this office space. This could be a nice little office or a nursery." Have you ever seen that? No. Oh, okay. Then you, <laughs> anyone that's seen John, John Mulaney's skit of the nursery part. Oh, an empire garbage can. Or a nursery. It's funny. But anyways, it's not funny if you haven't seen it, so this is really embarrassing. But, um, yeah, maybe that's why there's more stars. Because everything that's bright with that little flare, those points, those five, six points. Yeah, those six points. Those are all stars. And there's a lot more in this image than the other ones. So maybe that's why. Homo... Maybe even every little dot you see is a star. I don't know, but people are going to be researching this for years. Like this image that we're looking at right now. It's not just like a legendary image. It's not just like a cool thing that they got out of like 50. Where they're like, oh, this would be a cool desktop. No, this is like, people are going to be researching this for years. But if you do want a cool wallpaper, NASA on their Instagram has wallpaper options for your phone. So... Case, case you yeah. Do. In case yeah, you do, do just want to look at it as if it was. Yeah. Nice. I mean, I would. That's cool. That's yeah, a cool. I, they, I might do it. One of um, Neil Armstrong on the moon. Just or was it Buzz? No, it was Neil. Oh. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it was Buzz, but I'm pretty. I thought it was Neil. I don't know. He's like hanging out with the flag, but everyone doesn't know if it was real or fake because yeah. in the air floating. Man, I just waving in the wind. Just send a flat earther to space. Send the lead flat earther. Send the leader. To like somewhere cool where he can't deny it. Send him to the Cape Canaveral. That's easy. It's not, come on, man. That's just. Why do I keep talking about flat earthers? Just pull like a John Glenn, just let him orbit a few times. Yeah, just send him up there where those Red Bull people go. 
you know, like just at the end of the atmosphere, just right there where you can, where the gravity's still strong enough to pull you back down to Earth, but you're basically in space. What layer, what layer is that? I don't know. Maybe the... I don't know my... I don't know. The, I know there's... the metasphere? I know there's atmosphere and stratosphere. Stratosphere. And exosphere and ionosphere and thermosphere and See? metasphere. See? Metasphere? She knows. Because the, the one with the M is where they send all the weather balloons. The ionosphere is where it's... Re or no. Thermosphere is where it's really hot. Ionosphere I also think is kind of hot. Exosphere is like basically space. But... Jeez, gas and burns always bringing the good stuff. Good questions. So here's a bio biology question from Gas and Burn. Longtime loyal fan. Um, if an animal was made up of a substance that made them appear in a different type of light to the human eye's sight, would they be invisible to us? My answer um, would be I don't think so because there are animals that actually do that. Yeah. So some birds... Um, have feathers that in a certain light appear a different color to other birds, fellow birds, than they appear to us. We might see them as all black with a little bit of like a gasoline tint in the sunlight, and the other birds might see them as bright and beautiful and colorful. And so there actually are some birds like that. I don't remember exactly what the name off the top of my head is, but if you're to look up like ultraviolet like sight in birds, I guess... I don't know a good way to phrase that, but if you look into it, there are some birds that look all black to me, and I've seen it in Michigan, but they look all black to me, but if you hit it in the sunlight, it looks like just like gasoline looks like in the sunlight, so like a rainbow, like a small little rainbow tint, and then apparently to other birds, that's like really bright for them, so. I wonder, like, I think... If you were to, I think in order for you to be invisible, you might have to be made of something entirely different than like the average yeah, I don't, creature. I don't know in if there's a invisible. substance. Right, because how, how do I like omit some kind of light that can't be seen? I mean, unless you have a really limited like eyesight, you know? Like, like if you can only see one primary color. I mean, like, how do you get is a, that, is that a thing? How do you get an object and put it in a substance? Or make it out of a certain substance that's not invisible. Like, I don't even know if that's a thing on well, anything other than when you have glass, like a certain type of glass, and a certain type of liquid. Right, but it's not even that it's invisible, it's just... I want to hit this so bad. Invisible to the right viewer. Yeah, invisible to us. Not just, like, every other animal, just invisible to ours. Whatever, we're getting too deep into this. Know. Um, Next picture. Oh, I don't have a name for this one because I did not know it was on the slideshow. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure these are a bunch of galaxies colliding. Oh, that's really exciting that that is. It's really exciting if they can, if they have a photo of them actually colliding. So it says, this is a quote from NASA. I'm going to say what, this is a quote from NASA. Um, here are five galaxies, four of which interact. Um, these colliding galaxies are pulling and stretching each other in, gravi in a gravitational dance. Webb will revolutionize our knowledge of star formation and gas interactions within. So this mosaic is Webb's largest image to date, so this is the largest one, covering an area of the sky one-fifth of the moon's diameter, wow. as seen from Earth. Um, it contains more than 150 million <laughs> pixels and it's constructed from about 1,000 image files. So this isn't just like a little camera lens picture. This is like tough stuff. Um, Webb is Webb is the most complex and powerful space telescope ever built. So this is like 21st century life, baby. But um, yeah, this image is probably one of the better ones because it is the most, or it's the biggest. And it shows colliding galaxies, which I think is really cool. Yeah, cool. Also, you know what's kind of crazy about all this is um, all these images look like how people commercialize galaxies. What? Doesn't it? You know how like people commercialize space things? They put it on T-shirts. They make oh. images of it. They put it on coffee mugs. Yeah. Space is really looking like how they do it on those things. Like if you're gonna give me a space coffee mug and you just put a bunch of dots and flares and things that look like dust like that. It's pretty accurate. It's pretty accurate almost, <laughs> like, compared to other things. Like, yeah. 
like dinosaurs. They have they actually have feathers. They don't really look like what we paint them up to be. Do all dinosaurs have feathers, or just like the ones no, that we talked about? No, I don't think all of them do. But uh, Velociraptors, for example, have feathers. But basically, all of society has painted them to not have feathers, which is messed up. I don't know. I think this could be exciting because if we do watch them collide, that could also like answer the question of like what is our own fate because we're close to the Andromeda g galaxy, and I think that one is like we're like slowly with it. So if if one day we, I don't know. Yeah, but like I is don't. It a, is it a? Or is it more like a? Either way, it's probably <laughs> the end. <laughs> <laughs> but how many years? It's not going to be. Yeah, that's another thing. Years, this is not going to last for ten years. Are we going to see these things collide, or is it no? Gonna be, it's, especially if they're like that's got to be millions of years of right. waiting. Or you just like somehow fast forward the James Webb to go further out, and then look at it from there because it's probably already happened. Or would you do that if this thing's if this thing is looking at light that's traveled further from the back, past? Yeah, like it's looking at stuff from the past. This is you, not happening right you, now. Would you zoom out or zoom in to see? I don't know. We're going to get to... There's so many <laughs> rabbit holes this episode, you know? There's so many of, rabbit holes with James Webb, and we're only on the first we segment. We've got to start writing them down so we yeah. remember. Oh, okay, that was our last oh. image. Okay, well, spoiler on the next segment. <laughs> should, should we just move on? I don't... I guess. Oh, wait, do you want to show any... What? What were those? Oh, that was black hole images. The first photo ever of a black hole. I think they've really refined that. That that's another thing to talk about when I get back from my cruise, is what black hole images and discoveries in general. Black holes are like, well, you, you get sucked into a a, a hole because yes, we gotta find. Yeah, because there's a lot of like questions, things that we don't know, things that we think we know, things that we probably don't know but kind of know. A lot of scientists who have spent their whole lives trying to discover more about them you know have never fully understood them i don't know which one's crazier space or deep ocean probably space, space. but no question i mean we know is, we know a lot weird. more about space though yeah which is crazy so it's like yeah space is cooler and more interesting but we know more about it than Could deep ocean that so just not as intrigued like maybe like what's the what's a what's a what what's the budget to explore space Versus, versus the ocean, and I'm sure some companies probably don't want you searching the ocean. I mean, it, it, as, as, you know, as you get further out and you see like pollution and then like talk starts to happen. I mean, there's a lot of space pollution as well from all their satellites and everything. True. Like, what do they do with the Hubble spell Hubble telescope when it does die out, or this one? Like, they, they just Nothing. leave it up there. Yeah, they just leave it up there and it floats. What? What if it comes Have back you... into orbit and then it crashes somewhere? So there's this website where you could see space trash. They have every single piece of trash in space tracked. Um, and then they have it on a website. And I don't know what it's called, because I haven't been on it in years. And, yeah. But you could see how much trash is outside of Earth. And it just looks like a sheet of trash around Earth. And it's actually kind of sad. But sad. I don't know how... Vi I don't think it's really visible by a camera lens. Um, but the little pieces of trash are like a sheet around. I feel like it has to be some big, there has to be some big chunks out there too. Well, yeah. Like satellites floating around. Yep. Especially if a satellite got like hit by like a asteroid or something. Well, I just don't know how you could take a I picture of Earth without seeing the satellites. But I think that show goes to show how big Earth is. I think that's another thing with when we talk about Earth a lot, you never realize how big Earth is. But I really think we should move on before we get on too late and... I know, we were worried so we about this to open up this short. geode. I feel like we're doing really good. Yeah, no. <laughs> we're going actually almost too long, probably. Yeah, it's fine. Been up for 50 minutes. And uh, 40 minutes of those have been about James, James Webb. Webb. I'm happy about that. Me too. James Webb is it's, worth it's it. Thing. The last time I watched any kind of space like history happen, I cried in my living room. <laughs> I've never I've never taken a video of myself crying, but I did that time, and I saved it in my Snapchat memories, too. Uh, I never remember the space history. And it was when SpaceX had its first manned mission. Like, sent people into oh, space. Oh, yeah. That wasn't that long ago. Back. Yeah. I, cried. I gotta see that. I cried, like, a blubbering baby, because I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> the first, like, non, like, government-funded company to send out people in space. That's huge. That's a huge deal. And then, like, there was, it was the first people to uh, be launched from U.S. soil since, like, what, early, early Obama um, presidency. 
politics HD? No, we won't get there. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't just Obama that like he didn't. He didn't necessarily shut it down. Um, it was. Uh, was it Bush? I think Bush kind of shut it down. Politics HD. Really politics, <laughs> HD. Politics HD. Okay. Um. <laughs> anyways, our next segment before we get on too long, because I want to keep it going. Yeah. Is tick happens. <laughs> That's pretty. That's one of my favorite puns that I've had on the show. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> so I wanted to scare everyone, but before I continue, I do want to also talk. I want to acknowledge Gas and Burn's existence. Yes. The recent from Gas and Burn, a loyal. Uh, How many times can listener. we call Gas and Burn a loyal listener before? I, <laughs> um. Like everyone knows. Oh yeah, I'm gonna say it every time. <laughs> the recent space launch they did had what appears to be a rat. On the shuttle on the outside running around on in space. Outside? You guys see that? No, I did not I see it, that. Like, imploded. I actually would have suffocated and then froze, I think. Or vice versa. Or something. It would have died. Froze. <laughs> or suffocated because it froze. It would have died. I wonder that's weird. If that if that happened, I wanna know like where was the shuttle or if it was a shuttle, where was it? Yeah, I don't know. Was it maybe like still in the atmosphere? It's probably I don't know. Low on oxygen regardless. Yeah, it didn't last long out there, I'm sure, but still. Um, For it to last at all, it's, a, it's crazy. If, if that is legit. Yeah. I don't feel like, like I don't think Gaston Brin has fed us many lives, though, so far. That's like when he told us that, like, like camels yeah. are imported from, like, Australia or something, and we were like, what? And it turned out to be very much true. Oh, God. People <laughs> are using that footage of the rat to claim space launch was fake. If it was seen jumping near the thrusters in sp- Okay, I gotta see that. I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, but anyways, tick happens. I wanted to scare everyone because I, this past week, because we didn't have Science HD last week, because we were out celebrating the 4th of July and I was camping with Rose. Up near me in the woods. And, uh, I never had a tick in my life, but I got my first tick and I got it on the back of my neck. It was cool. I lost, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I gained experience in getting a tick. That was my first one. It's my only one. And I only had one that I know of still. It's been a week, so I think I'm good. Another thing would be like blown up like a little balloon. Yeah, it'd be like pretty I big. Think everyone kind of, I feel like everyone who's had a tick has to remember their first tick. Like my first tick, I was like a kid, and my, little, and my older sister was trying to do my hair, and I was in the bathroom. She goes, Rose, don't move. And I, I know that means something is wrong. That's on you... my head, and I'm concerned. So she goes running out and tells my mom or whatever, and then they come back with tweezers and a lighter. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, what's happening? So they rip the tick out, light it on fire, toss it in the toilet, and that's not what I do with ticks to this day. I, just, I don't know. My, my worst fear with a tick is not the tick being on me. It's not having to rip it out. It's when you rip it out, if you don't get the head, it's, it's a possibility of getting Lyme disease. Like, yeah. Yeah. And like that, that part to me is scary, especially because like in my, in my head, it's like that head can just like pop off because it's so tiny. Those things have a tight hold. Yeah, they have a tight hold. Very tight hold. Anyways. But, um, tick happens. yeah, we all know. Yeah, tick happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, I used to be on like a shirt, <laughs> but yeah, so Lyme disease is a very common disease from ticks. It can be passed on to humans. A lot of deer die from it, and dogs get it. Lyme disease. What is it? Do? And uh, do you know? no, I don't know what Lyme disease does to you, but I know like your skin might break out a little bit, oh, and that yeah. might make you sick, and it's just a bad disease. Now, the reason why I don't know what Lyme disease does to you is because it doesn't sound that scary, other than just like yeah, it's a disease that's not good for you. Now, there's this other thing that ticks are starting to get, and it's from a lone star tick, which looks like this. And it's Lone Star Tick because it has the dot on the back of it, naturally. Um, sorry if you're afraid of ticks, but it's not going to hurt you right there. Trigger warning, yeah. I should have trigger. I should do trigger warning before I put it up there, but... Anyways, so Lone Star Tick has a single dot on it, and apparently these ticks, and I don't know if it's spreading to more ticks or just Lone Star Ticks, but it is starting to spread over the country of the United States and over the world. Now, these guys are have some sort of like enzyme within them that is affecting the things that they bite and guess and burn that's not right sorry 
but it's Ly Lyme disease does not do that. It's this disease, alpha gal syndrome. Alpha gal syndrome, and it makes it so you can't eat meat or other mammal-related products. So I'm not trying to get you like you're not you're wrong, but like it's this one. You got, you were right, but it's it's not Lyme disease. It's this one. Lyme disease is something different. It's Lyme disease will give you the red rash. And that's something they say to look for. If you do have a tick on you and you pick it off, watch for a red ring around the place where it bit you because that could be like a first telltale sign of a disease. Um, so you'll get fever, chills, headaches, fatigue, muscle joints and aches, swollen lymph nodes. If it becomes severe because you didn't treat it, you get um, facial palsy, which is weakness in your facial, facial mus muscles. God, goodness. Arthritis. Um, pain that comes in your tendons, muscle joints, and bones, heart palpitations, irregular heartbeat, episodes of dizziness or shortness of breath, inflammation of the brain, and spinal cord. That could be very bad. I feel like it's worst pain, case. Shooting pains, numbness, or tingling in the hands or feet. Sounds like a damn commercial for some medicine. I like, you know where they speed it fast? fast. I'm to imitate that. But, so basically, Lyme disease is you just get very sick, and there's, like, obviously severe symptoms, but it's just, like, you get sick, like a standard sick. Um, or start feeling like crap. Or this one is you develop a mild to severe allergy allergy to red meat or other mammal related products like dairy, and basically you just can't eat those things anymore. So, the conspiracy theory, <laughs> which is not like likely at all, um, in my opinion, it's not likely at all, is that the vegans made this. Release made this enzyme and released them into ticks and <laughs> it's trying to make the world vegan which i'm pretty sure if the all the world went vegan we wouldn't actually have enough food to sustain everyone because there's not enough farmland to feed everyone on the world in the world yeah so there's not a winning thing no there's no winning in the world <laughs> so if everyone went vegan we would all starve by the way but right. anyways Tick, these ticks do give you that allergy, and I feel like that would suck because I can't go long without eating steak, burger, chicken. Well, I guess chicken's not red meat, but still, if it makes me allergic to chicken, I'm gonna be mad. See, I think I think I could get this tick, and it could give me that disease, and I'd be just fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was I was vegetarian for like five years, five years. Went vegan for a little bit in there intermittently. I don't know. That should be our band name, Intermittent Vegans. Intermittent Vegans. That's a good band name. Isn't it? <laughs> it's a good band name. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, I'm not vegan. I could never be. I, I just can't. My diet is so, in like, I've been doing it for so long that I it would take a lot for me to change, to be honest. But, if I get this tick, well, it's the only hope. <laughs> yeah. cold turkey. Like, then I'm going to be puking. More. Well, I'm hoping if I ever get this tick, it, like, changes how I... Oh, yeah, here's... Just in case you don't know what red meats are. <laughs> if I ever get this tick, I'm hoping it makes it taste gross. Or at least make me not want it anymore. Rather than it just sounds so good and I can't help myself and I eat it, then I get sick. That photo um, makes it look gross. Yeah, it does. But... Actually, those beef burgers? No. If I throw those on a grill, mm. those Angus beef burgers? They look good when it's cooked, but when I see it like that, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> well, if I see, like, steak like that, uh, it just reminds me of Madagascar, so it doesn't yeah. actually gross me out. When I see it mainly red, then I'm like, oh, it's okay. The ribs, yeah. I'm like, eh. But the burgers, this. ground meat into a burger patty, I'm like, dude, that looks good. Like, I want to throw that down right now. Yeah. But anyways, um, yeah, that's tick happens, man. So be careful. Um, wear long sleeve, long pants. If it's too hot for that, spray yourself up with mosquito slash tick spray because there's the two. There's combos out there, or at What's least the tick spray. Too. Like I, I know like there's none. Mosquito is like, it's like citronella. It's not just citronella. It's picaridin, which is a sometimes, which is like one of those things that some people say don't use it because it. Can well, be bad here's the thing. thing. There's DEET, which is not necessarily. 100% proven to be a carcinogen, but is widely thought to be a carcinogen, which means it's cancer causing. Um, there's percentages of DEET, the smallest one being like 15 to 5%, 5 to 15%, and that's like a family mosquito pack. Like off, if you were to get like a family thing, you'd probably see like 15 to 20% DEET, maybe even 5 Now there's the DEET free, which uses a different chemical called picaridin, which is proven to not be a carcinogen, 
at all, I'm pretty sure, and it's a little bit safer. But I've worked at a summer job, and I've used both, and I tried using the non-DEET one, and I get bit up. I get so bit. Like, the Picarinin does not work. It might work for, like, a campfire or something, but you'd have to, like, soak yourself, maybe. But it just does not work as well. So yeah. DEET's the way to go. And then there's, for the extremists, I like to put this one on my clothes only. There's 95% DEET. And that one. Is I'd like, be scared to use that one. That I one think is, I'd be a little scared. It's not a spray. It's like, I mean, it's technically a spray, but it's more like a squirt. It's like liquid rather than a spray. It's crazy. I've seen it. It's like I'm coming. Following the like, difference between a spray and a squirt. So a spray would be like a mist, right? A spray. Like uh -huh. a, and a squirt would be more like liquid. E. It's not as misty. Okay. I, that's how I would say it. Wouldn't you want a mist to put on your clothes? Yeah. Not a squirt? Exactly. But the squirt is stronger because it's more of a concentrate and you can't really miss the concentrate apparently. Also, you don't want to put that much on you because it's 95% DEET, which is almost like a pure chemical. Yeah. So, like, isopropyl alcohol is only 3% of isopropyl alcohol, but yeah, it smells that strong. Imagine if it was 100% or 95%. Yeah, it'd be crazy. But, um, anyways, that's a tangent. Last segment, Geo, Geo Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Last segment, if you are just tuning in, we are about to smash this geode wide open, see if we get lucky. But before, of course, since we're educational, we don't actually know much about geodes. Um, I was going to put my safety glasses on, I thought I'd figure out where we're going with that. <laughs> we could talk you talk to you a little bit about geodes yes we brought we got we grabbed notes because we quite literally we were we went to a little downtown area today in some city and um we're walking the streets because they had a bunch of boutiques and then outside their shop it just said like rock shop yeah and fun I, yeah, rock shop yeah fun, fun rock shop <laughs> <And> I, <was laughs> like, I don't know what this is like is it i had two expectations but i know i had one expectation and then it ended up being the other one i forgot existed so I thought it was just going to be like you walk in and they're just going to have like a bunch of like raw rocks kind of sitting around with like an older woman behind the desk and you just like feel weird because it's like a tiny shop. But then you walked in and it was like a bunch of like crystals and like fossils and bones and it's just cool stuff. They had the singing bowls, you know? Have you guys ever, I don't know, I can't talk to you like as if like live. <laughs> <laughs> Need a live studio audience. Like, like the bowls that you take like this wand and then you like rub it around the bowl and it like sings and like hums or something. It's weird. <laughs> They had those, so it's kind of it's kind of like the inner like piece, the the crystal the crystal girl shop kind of thing. Yeah, but this is definitely a shop, shop for those crystal girls, but <laughs> it's also just really cool if you like rocks, or even if you don't like rocks, it's cool because you rocks. never realize how many like pretty rocks there are. I love rocks. Like there's so many rocks, it's more than you can comprehend. It feels like I have like I have like jars, and like under my bed I have like wooden chests just full of like random rocks. But what's really cool is a lot of the times if you like were to hand me a rock from a specific box, like if I can see the box it came from, I'd be like, oh, I got that from the beach when I was walking down with Sam and Maya that one day in the middle of this month, <laughs> which is weird. I'm, I have weird things like that. Yeah. Like, where I'm like really good at like like selective memory almost, but then there's other things that like I don't know. Selective memory. Uh, what is it called? Intertwined into a rock. Yeah. But um, <laughs> the cool thing about this rock shop is it's not only just like a, I mean it is just a rock shop, but there's so much packed into a, a rock. Like a rock could be a fossil, which they have fossils. Mm -hmm. Then they have this huge geode that was worth twenty nine thousand dollars. They're literally selling it for twenty nine thousand dollars. It was big. And it's like the size of this table. I feel like you could probably like sit in it, like inside yeah, you could sit it. inside <laughs> the geode, and it was like halfway open, and it's twenty nine thousand dollars. And then you have the small geodes that are like available for like a pack of four. You can open, see what's inside yourself for like eighteen, eight, eighteen dollars, or you can get one big one for fourteen, and that's what we got. And then there's smaller ones for like ten, and then yada yada yada. And they're from like different parts of the world. And so I highly recommend going to a rock shop because rock shops are cool um, and they're old. All rocks are super old and you it takes so much time and pressure to form a rock. And then that's how I'm going to swing it into how geodes are made. So a geode is basically a hollow rock mm -hmm. and not just ordinary any ordinary hollow rock. It's a hollow rock that has crystals inside of it. And it has crystals inside of it because they're hollow and they have been pressurized and it's basically a bubble if you were to think of like a bubble and then rocks being made if you don't know how a rock is made it's basically think three different types of ways sedimentary igneous and conglomerate 
You don't remember conglomerate? No, not conglomerate. Metamorphic. Metamorphic. That's what it is. <laughs> I was like, what? Conglomerate is a type of rock, but t- it's metamorphic. If you told me to say that one when I was like this big, it was never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, metamorphic. <laughs> so the two we're going to talk about is igneous and sedimentary. So yep. sedimentary is, well, sediment, and then being pushed uh, with each other uh, with so much pressure over such a large amount of time mm-hmm. or a certain amount of time that it forms into one solid just like if you were to put two marshmallows inside of a iron and melt them what was metamorphic then because sedimentary i think I of like layers being smushed together like a sandstone but metamorphic i thought that was something like where it gets fused to one where sedimentary i think you still have you, you can still see like layers in the rock well yeah sedimentary metamorphic you like, usually can break it Right. You can like usually sandstone. you can usually break it. It's like yeah, and um, Ugh. dude, man, OG came for the best part. He oh, raided wow. us, so, so now seven he's people up. are joining us. Okay. Dude, man, OG, we are about to smash open this rock, and we're going over how geodes are made. Regardless, geodes are made from igneous, which is lava forming, so lava volcano stuff mm-hmm. like obsidian, and then uh, sedimentary. Um, are really cool. So sometimes the crystals are also made through um, um, water seeping through the rock, and the uh, because it's hollow in the middle, that water will start. Or the, the minerals is passing through while the water seeps through with the water. Minerals pass through with water through the rock. Once it hits the hollow part, those minerals start to crystallize inside the rock, which is why when you crack open a geode, sometimes, most of the time, the inside hollow layer is formed with crystals. Yeah. Also, I think crystals can be formed from organic matter, like dead animals. That's kind of that's kind of like symbolic, I think so. If that is the case, like imagine you die in a rock and like. Well, you can get formed into a diamond if you do die and your that's family right. member chooses to. Um, uh, here's a here's a here's a joke of the night. Why wasn't the geologist hungry? He lost his appetite, which I think is a type of rock. <laughs> there's so many cool names for rocks. There's like, there's like, uh, of course, granite, but like agate and then opal. Amethyst. Amethyst. Moss agate. I think amethyst is a crystal, though. Any agate. There's a lot of different agates. There's a variety of agates. Maybe. A crystal is probably just a rock as Jade. well. Jade. That was, that was just Formaline. like Formaline. Hematite. I don't know. Yeah. Pearl? Is that a crystal technically, or is that its own No, thing? I think that's a different... Kick it to the curb, we don't care about that. Anyways, quartz. <laughs> there we go. Um, so a geode is a hollow bubble and formed into a rock. And it's also a cool way to, for humans to experience joy. So, when we were in the rock shop and we bought this, this we, we were... <laughs> I'm so happy this dude told us this, because we were about to ruin my entire room. Um, <laughs> this dude told us, hey, by the way... When you're opening a rock, um, put it inside of a towel, because if you don't, it will fly all over the place. I didn't know this because my first time I did it, I did it in my backyard, and I was smashing it, and I lost almost all of the rock because it just exploded and went everywhere. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thank you. Can you imagine that, too? Especially like if you're paying money to, for this thing. <laughs> that would you suck. You bring it home, and you whack it with a hammer, and it just all over the yard. Yeah, that would suck. So... I think the best route for this is to put on goggles. <laughs> like, this is the first time we actually needed goggles on Science HD. I mean, we're still, we're going to wrap it in the towel, aren't we? Or are you just going to... Oh, we have to hydrate. It? So, grab your cup. Oh, did they do that? Cheers, oh, yeah. Posture check? Posture check, two hydrates, stretch. We have to stretch as well, because Mew. I can't hydrate that fast. That's a lot of hydrates. <laughs> so, if you're watching this on YouTube... We're going just hammer. I don't have a chisel, so it, that kind of sucks. I'm going to have to just smash it really hard. No, that's expensive. Um, so, let me also have to stretch. So just get a stretch in. <gasps> now, if you're watching this on YouTube, we are doing our Twitch redeems. So, if you're on live, watching live on Twitch, uh, you can redeem whatever to make us do things. And I have to do a freestyle after this with Rose in the room. That's going to be awkward. <laughs> That's going to be real awkward, but I have to freestyle about rocks. I kind of like that. 
So after this, I will do a freestyle. More water. While you get this. Okay, I'll do. Up. I'll do it. Or you can do it as well. No, no, no you're good. I'm, I'm gonna. Hmm. So I think the best course of action is to mute this microphone so it doesn't peak. Has some smashing because look, it's gonna peak when I'm doing this. I mean. See how it goes in the uh, red. Oh, well, could you just make the like quieter? Yeah, I'm gonna mute this. I'm gonna mute it while I'm smashing. So I have a cutting board. I don't know. Oh. We're kind of first timers with this. Yeah, I don't know how this well this is gonna work. Okay, I'll drink. I'll sip twelve sips. Mute. Close enough. So I have a cutting board, so then it's harder surface. We might have to do it on the ground and smash it off the camera. I'm gonna put a thin layer between the hammer and the geode, and then a thick layer between the cutting board and. Um, could also use this side this. too, like yes. to get, like, start the crack at it, you know? I really don't think we should do this on the table at all. Try it one time. We're gonna try, try it. Try it over here, not in the middle where there's not a lot of support down here. So we're gonna mute this real quick. Over here? Over here yeah, you think? They, yeah, there's more support from the legs down here. If you do it right here in the crack, there's nothing done. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna mute this so it doesn't hurt. So the first hit did not work, but I broke it apart on the second hit. Might have even broke inside the crystal. Where did you put it? I want to see it. Oh, oh, that's pretty. This is cool. Okay. I'll dump it. So I accidentally smashed on the inside, but it is really pretty. So here's the inside of our geode. <laughs> As a little bit ago, it's not, well, it is Let's technically a new mic. This is the mic Hollow I use for cavity? podcasts. I have a podcast mic and a gaming mic. So it is hollow, mm -hmm. and there are a bunch of crystals, and it's like pinkish, like Himalayan salt, or at least it yeah. looks pink, right? Yep. There mm -hmm. are a crap ton of crystals, like little dust. So if you're ever doing this at home, I highly suggest putting a towel. Mm -hmm. Then dump it out, and uh, yeah, it looks cool like that. Yeah. So when this rock was forming, um, the middle of it, became hollow after so sometimes they have gas bubbles in them especially when they're um formed through the igneous um process so when that bubble disappears creates hollow cavity um and then you run into water seeping through it bringing minerals and then when the minerals come inside the rock it starts to form the crystals if you guys have ever done the like crystals at home kit it's kind of a similar process where you put it in some liquid that it gives you with fancy powder and then it forms a little crystal for you on like a string, I think it was, or a stick. So same, same idea. With it's, cool rock. it's cool. Okay, I'm so glad I have this now. Like, this is just cool to have now. We bought our geode. Well, let's go I, this is not amethyst because... It's like a light pink. Um, amethyst is purple. And this is like light pink, so... I don't know, I'm not a we geologist. Should do I do know someone that's a geologist that went to school for it, so maybe I'll have to talk to him about it. That would be cool. Can we we should, it it would be cool to do, like, um, some research on this to see what type of crystals on the inside, because we did... The one that was $29,000 at the store was, um, amethyst. was amethyst, and that was just purple. Uh, what game has amethyst? I think it might what be Stardew... What show? Game. I think it might be Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley has amethyst, I'm pretty sure. Is this the thing why Becky said we weren't compatible? Huh? <laughs> um, sorry, just reading comments. Uh, <laughs> I'm very confused. Oh, by the way, it's what geodes look like, standard geodes. Then they, this is amethyst. So that's an amethyst geode. That's purple. Yeah. I wonder oh, Minecraft has amethyst. Okay. Yeah, maybe geodes, both. That one has, like, that's what ours looks like, but yep, this that, is the inside still looks a little purple on that photo, but it's... But that's well, pretty, ours does too, a little bit. If you look at it right, but I think like if you were to shine light on that one, or more specifically ours, it doesn't look purple. Can if there's a witchy person in the chat, can you tell me what these are supposed to do? If I hold this <laughs> to like close to my heart, is it gonna make me a feel witchy? Better? Yeah, aka crystal people, rock people. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's see if it still connects. Oh, I hate that noise. Oh really? You hate that noise? Oh, okay. That's awful. Stop. 
There we go. It's... Hold it close to the cam. All right. I can hold it close to the cam. I kind of like the noise. It's like egg. There I, you go. I hate the noise of... There's a little chip right there. That must have been where you hit it. Oh, yeah. right there. It's, I found the hole. <gasps> it's like Monster Zink. Oh. It's like Monster Zink. Where's my teeth? Oh, wait, no. This is not big enough. Anyways, I'll hold the big piece close. Oh, I'm coming. How long arms than I do? Do that. The one, this one. I'm gonna go no, in there. I'm gonna go right in there. Okay, you're gonna crawl under the table. I'm crawling or underneath the table. I'm going right in there. Okay. <laughs> 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 Real geog. Cracked live on stream, baby. Let's give you the thumbnail. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's very sparkly. So I highly recommend going to your local rock shop. Or not even local, because this was not local for me. No. That, I'm gonna start this, buying them. <laughs> this does rock. Um, actually, let me look up... While well, I'm sitting here close to my computer. Let me look up... Uh, Freestyle beats for you, oh. dude, man. And I'll make my co-host cringe. Freestyle. Also, the Google Doodle for the day is the James Webb t telescope. Hoot, hoot. So if you go on Google, you will see James Webb. D it's the deepest photo of the universe ever taken. It's cool. Hey. Uh. I just realized I'm sitting in front of the... Like, I know I was, but I just realized you guys just, I'm basking in it. So here's my go-to beat. I think it's getting louder. Sorry if you can hear it double lapsed. Okay, this is gonna be really short because Rose is present. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got a rock. I'm also wearing socks. And that kind of is rad, but it also kind of sucks. I got a big hammer. I just got Rio'd. What did I do with my hammer? I opened a geode, man. <laughs> like the sun. I like Pokemon. What's the best Pokemon you know? Geo, dude. Geo dude is kind of rude cause he's got the crude Dude man sent it too big of paragraphs for me to read dude I'm pulling all the crystals from the geode It's kind of messy Highly recommend a towel Because it's kind of messy I can't really rhyme with rock Other than socks One time I had chicken pox That was really bumpy just like the geode And now I got to see you go down to the round and clown I don't know how to rhyme with rocks I don't know how to rhyme with rocks uh yeah yeah rock block flock mock <laughs> okay, okay okay I think that's it I can't do it um that's my like Go to beat. Uh, I did rhyme dude with dude. Geo dude. Dude. What rhymes with dude? I guess nude. Um, what up, mini plus? Um, but anyways. Thank you, Mitty. I don't recognize you from around here, so welcome uh, to Science HD. And I think we'll. I think Science HD is gonna be a hit when we can both be back in person. Yeah. Um, we're not going to be in person until basically September. Yeah. Maybe late August. Really late August. But um. I mean, I might I might come down early August and we'll do it like in this setting one more time. But. Yeah, maybe. I'll be here. But anyways, uh, that's besides the point. <laughs> we opened a geode. That's cool. We might do this again because we want to get. I think we should get more like colorful geodes. Like it would be really cool to get. A purple geode. You know what we should do? What would be pretty fun is if like you and I did like a, like a science like Jeopardy show one day. Yeah, we gotta do a game That'd show out of this. Um, I think that would be really cool to make 
And maybe we should do it where the 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 viewers are, can participate, and then one of us participates. Promote the heck out of that. Yeah, like. But we also need someone to come on. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll know make someone, this form. You know someone too. Well, are we gonna do it in person or on here? You know what I mean. No. Anyways, if you have any ideas for us, we would love it. But we're also gonna think of our own stuff. And next week, I'm gonna be by myself because Rose is going on a cruise. So if you're in the Caribbean, um, go easy on her ship. And uh, if you're not in the Caribbean. Tune in to Science HD episode 9 featuring me by myself. We might do another animal special. Or we might talk about some other things. Or I might find another cool experiment to do, like smashing rocks in my room. So, yeah. Do we have any last discussion points for like 10 minutes? Less than that? 10 minutes? I don't think we do. Um, it was, that was a... I like the rock stuff. I I would not mind more rock segments. Yeah. Like I might go all the way back to that rock shop. And get more geodes. Yes. If you are interested in an animal special, because I love animals and I am currently going to school to study more about them, and I'm in my fourth year, so I'm Ooh. super interested in animals. Hit the follow button if you're not followed, and hit the Discord. Uh, exclamation point discord if you want to join for the um, updates on when we're actually going live or if we cancel a show or if we're doing a surprise show or, or whatever so my since I got a question I don't like talking about myself this much but I don't actually love it. it I love talking about myself but I hate bringing it up because then I look like you know it's like fun but you want to do it in like a yeah I want to do it way. but I don't want to be yeah, self-centered right. um my major is zoology, but it's actually a biology major with a concentration of zoology. So, um, I'm a bio major. Did you say zoology? Yeah. So, Zo? so zoology sounds like you're studying zoos. Zoology is actually how you say it because zo, Z-O, means animals. I did not know that. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, zoology is cool. Um... There's actually a zoo and aquarium major on Michigan State. <laughs> Michigan State has a zoo and aquarium major, but it's not called zoology. It's just, but yeah. Anyways, I know I was blowing your mind. I didn't tell you yeah, that before. I did not, I'm sorry. Never came, like, I'm sorry I didn't tell new. you before. I'm sorry I didn't tell you before. <laughs> Gosh. Oh uh, yeah, Michigan State's cool. Um, I was actually gonna go there too, Mitty. Now I go to, as you can see in this flag back here, Northern Michigan University. What what? So go there, Mitty, and we can team up. You can be on the show if you want. Wildcats. Um, Ohio State is not better. Ew. It might actually be better in some categories. <laughs> I know I see those Ohio State things in your streams, dude, man. I know. Mitty, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. Um, I don't have access to my keyboard, but if you hit exclamation point Discord and you want to join, that's how you get updates for Science HD. Along with updates for my boy DC, because he streams too. We just have a good community going on. But anyways, uh, that was a lot of stuff. I like this discussion stuff at the end. Yeah, I like it too. It's fun talking to people that are viewing. Flying Fish 82, my boy. I love Flying Fish. I should talk about that next week. Flying Fish? Flying Fish. I had to draw a Flying Fish the other day. Thank you, Gas and Burn. <laughs> Dude. Flying Fish. I might That'd do that. I might do that. So we also have a YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. I don't advertise it that much because it's mainly for like family, but or anyone that wants to catch up. Our episodes are a little long because they're about an hour and thirty minutes max. This one's probably gonna be the longest. And uh, so they're a little long to watch, but if you just play them on the background, they're pretty fun. Uh, and I'm suck at uploading them on time. Thomas for good TV. Also known as, what is his username? Crap. I forgot his username. Uh, that? No, I don't think you know him. Oh, okay. I just thought, we, we know another Thomas, so I thought maybe it and was. I, uh, man, he's like a developer for a game called Project Winter. Red 5, there we go. Yeah, everyone knows everyone here. So yes, Red 5. Uh, my favorite science fact. What's your favorite science fact? Um, Uranus spins on its side. 
That's a good one. Uranus spins on its side. Mm hmm know that. That's your favorite one? Um, I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's just the only one I could think of off the top of my head that fast. I'm trying to think of my favorite one. I can't. Oh, shoot. I also like talking about why Pluto is a planet. That's one of my favorite ones. Because it's more but closely related to a moon? It, or it shares more qualities to a moon than it does to an actual planet? There's an asteroid. So there's an asteroid belt between the inner and outer planets in our solar system. There's an asteroid within that belt that is bigger than Pluto. So if we consider Pluto a planet, we also need to consider the asteroid a planet. Yeah. Pluto's orbit what, is also... Yeah weird like it's not it's it's not like the other planets orbit so you can't consider a planet for that reason as well damn so yeah it's more closely related to things that aren't a planet than it is planet. to a planet yeah and it's little yeah i've heard that but one before. the pluto also has a heart on it in case you've never seen that dude what is it? my favorite crap man i don't know my favorite space fact is that olympus mons on mars is the same surface area as arizona did you know russia is bigger than pluto did not know this. Did not know any of this. I feel like if Pluto hit our planet, we'd be fine. <laughs> well, not we'd be fine, but like <laughs> Earth itself would be fine. Because it would probably send us into a, a catastrophic event. I've My heard favorite. of that one, Gas and Burn. Thorny lizards shoot boiling hot blood from their eyes to Ooh. fend off predators. I've heard about that. Gas and Burn just reminded me of one of my favorite facts. So hippos, I've already talked about this, but have this red... Sweat is what it's similar to. And it looks like blood. And it's not. It's actually this liquid that comes out of them that is red. And it has a natural antiseptic. And it's just from enzymes within that liquid. And it helps them cure their cuts and stuff like that. Hmm. So. That's neat. Yeah. That's a good one. Yes. Also, I don't know if we survived the moon. I don't think humans were alive during that time. But we were just listening to a Bill Nye's competing podcast. Science not, rules. Science rules. Oh, yeah, we as an Earth. Okay, yeah. Then, yeah. Um, but science rules was talking about how dinosaurs died and some s survived um, during that event of a meteor or whatever you properly call it astronomically i can't remember i took a whole astronomy class my senior year of high school and a lot of the information is out of my head yeah there's a difference between like meteor, meteor meteorite comet asteroid but um tail, doesn't have a tail, it like was, was saying fly. how some of them survived like crocodiles alligators some birds and other things that were alive during now i also want to throw out there because i do day camps with kids and we do a dinosaur week and a lot of them are like wait if alligators and and crocodiles and stuff like that were alive with the dinosaurs doesn't that make them a dinosaur no basically things that could swim and fly were not dinosaurs like pterodactyls not a dinosaur that is a, that is huge it's a pterodactyl no i mean it's its well, own thing it's what do you consider a crocodile it's its own thing it's like not the same lineage is what I mean. Then why isn't a T-Rex a T-Rex and... Because it's based on... It's, but I consider it a dinosaur. So if I were to pull up a, a tree... Oh, is that tree thing? Yeah, if I were to pull so up a... Is, well, I mean, if I were to pull up a tree, everything branches off. If you really go zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, everything branches off one thing. But if you were to zoom in, zoom in, dinosaurs are over here, pterodactyls are over here. Like, pterodactyls are not in the dinosaur category. And they're actually pterodactyloids, and there's <laughs> multiple things within those like pterosaur is one of them and so when you say pterodactyl you're actually not saying anything specific that's be that'd be like the same thing as saying like big cats <laughs> or something or not big cats because that's not all um mammals you would just be like saying mammals so um crocodiles are reptiles and uh dinosaurs are more closely related to a chicken than a crocodile so Sorry. No, no, we're good. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> what? What? If, you know, I just said if you zoom out that map, like it all comes from one thing. Yeah. Do we know what that one thing is? Uh, not really. It's fishy though. So this is evolution. This is probably my favorite topic of all science. And where did the fishy thing originate? Well, you can't really track say, what the will... one common an so it's called Luca, last universal common ancestor, 
and Luca isn't like a thing that you can draw on a piece of paper or describe, but it is thought to be fishy because that's asking where did all life start on Earth, or when did all life start on Earth? Yeah, silencio Bruno. <laughs> um, here, I can allow that. Um, but what I'm trying to say is, it's not known because you're asking when is when did life start, and there's still theories. There's primordial soup. There's uh, what's the vent thing? Uh, there's vents at the bottom of the ocean, and then there's thermal another, vents. Thermal vents. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah, at the bottom of the ocean, and then there's other ones. There's theories, and none of them are even confirmed. Um, but it's thought to be at the ocean, and then turns from a fish to something else. There's actually a really cool time-lapse video where it just time-lapse millions and billions of years at a time, and it like shows you from fish to like something that starts to grow appendages that are able to crawl its way onto land, and then... How do you feel about um, uh, people that say we're all like technically made of like stardust? That's the same thing. Because, like, does, does that? Like, that's I don't, I don't just know going, exactly that's just Big Bang same, now. Like, technically, like, are we all made of stardust? Like, I mean, all, if you look if, at if, the... I mean, you get into, like, creation of the universe. When you talk yeah. About stuff. Now we're getting deep. Um, but what I would say is if you look up the five or the four most common elements on Earth, uh, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and... Carbon, oxygen, nitrogen. Whoa, why did so I like just forget it? Helium, hydrogen? Was one of those two? Hydrogen. There we go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, those four common elements, that's what the majority of Earth and us are made out of. I think a lot of stars are made of. And if you go in space and you look at everything that's made out of space, those are the four most common elements. So I think that's what people are saying. We're made of stardust, as we're talking about. I, I need to read these. Everyone's Getting talking deep, so like, much. Thermal events. <laughs> that was funny. Oh. Okay. Wait, hold on. I'm getting so many things in here. This is weird to me. Okay, wait, hold on. Someone's I'm reading these comments. Yeah, someone's challenging you for bits without even saying the challenge first. They're just put throwing bits. Hold on. Yeah, Crocodile, did you guys... Yes, we looked at the James Webb Space Telescope earlier, and that yes. was great. We didn't have comparison images, uh, images though, so if you want to compare the images, I highly recommend. Yes, that we up. didn't have the comparison images because we, it came up today, and we yeah. just put this together last minute. Not gonna lie. Yeah, we've been out all day. <laughs> we've been out I'm all day getting this geo. <laughs> we've been out all day getting the geo. This is not <laughs> just from around the corner. This is from an hour away. Yeah. Um, okay, so fuel caution. A first-time viewer says, "I challenge her, not me, Rose." to wear someone's reading glasses for bits, which is what he already put. is It's a challenge, but it has to be reading glasses, magnifying. I, I don't, have I don't really, glasses. I mean, we're not really taking challenges, but I have glasses I if would, that makes you feel better. I wear glasses 90% of the time. <laughs> I actually don't have my glasses with me, but we have safety glasses. Sorry, we don't have any glasses in the building for her to wear. You want to put these on? Yeah. There are safety glasses for five bits. Oh, and Rose, what's your major? I like this talking. Thank you guys for the questions. These aren't goggles. Fuel caution. Um, my don't... major is computer science. Um, with a, I'm also a double major in math or working towards it. I keep taking math classes just because it's like the one thing that I like to take. So like I, I technically have my math minor right now, but I just keep going. Yeah, so she has a cooler major than me. Yeah. <laughs> you just agree. I'm just kidding. I like math. I think both of our majors are pretty cool. She also goes to the same school as me, Northern Michigan University. Yippers. That's how we met. Mm -hmm. And we'll be uh, living in the same place next semester. So in a couple days, um, not days, weeks. Yeah, weeks. Wow. I'm reading about chat. A month. I think it's about a month. Yeah, in about a month. Okay. And mark my words, in a month, this in-person stream is going to be every day. It's not going to be in this room, but we're going to like try to deck out the room as much as we can and make it the Science HD Studios, what I'm going to call it. So we're going to have a spare room. 
That's going to be great. Got some burns coming at me. Math major, but can't work out how many years between 1990 and 2022. It just <laughs> 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 That's fair. Nice. Yeah. Gas and burn. With the burns. That's where. Know. That's how he gets gas and burn. That's but I how can it's... calculate how fast a bullet's going to fall when you shoot it at a projectile of 45 degrees going a certain speed. That I can do. <laughs> that, for some reason, simple, quick math, I can't. It takes me a second. Maybe it's because my entire life I've had to quadruple check my work before I turn in a math exam. 7 plus yeah. 3, 10. Put in the calculator, 10. Go back again. That was 10, right? 10, yep. Go again. 10. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. Get fuel caution. I never accepted I the challenge, and we don't have glasses. <laughs> I'm sorry. I would totally accept the challenge if we could do it. And it wasn't, like, bad. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's really hard to do math like that for some reason. I think it's the quadruple digits that make it hard. It wasn't even that part. It was just... Maybe. It's not. I need to be able to, like, close my eyes and, like, be like, carry the one, whatever, and then... Um, but thank you, Phil Caution, for tuning in. Person. Appreciate you. Um... But yeah, I think where I mess up on the math in the years is um, the transition between the 19s and the 20s. Like, I don't know why, but it resets in my... It resets. I don't know. It's just weird. Yeah. But anyways. Tick happens. You good? Tick happens. <laughs> we should get that on a sticker. Um, that'd be cool one day if we're ever like a real podcast show thing which we are but i mean like big cool. it'd be cool if we got like a sticker for that i'd be like a temporary sticker for that that'd be cool yeah. um but yeah anyways next week tuesday at 9 p.m it'll be me animal special be there send hit a follow hit the follow if you really want to tune in uh and hit exclamation point discord if you want access to the youtubes and when we're going live. And when I'm going live, because I go live all the time playing games every mm -hmm. other day, but on Tuesdays at 9 p.m., this is what I strictly do. Oh, yeah. Uh, Thomas for Good TV is a computer science major. Well, we graduated two years ago, and he's in it. This dude, Flying Fish, is an engineer. So lots of math, too. Y'all are great. We're great. High five. <laughs> Sticker that says, Moose-tastic. Moose-tastic. That'd be good. So I think I want to transition to making the moose the logo for Science HD, and mm -hmm. then... Lab coat moose? Yeah. Yeah. The lab coat moose. But, like, a cooler one I than should, the one I, I have. I should make a new sticker that's, um, or emote, whatever the, the heck they make, and, um, make it, like, an Einstein-looking moose, and give him an afro, like yeah. his tongue sticking out. Yeah. A little Einstein crazier. Oh, Red Five's fiance. What? So we got a That's couple cool. in the chat. Aww. And they're nerds. <laughs> a nerd couple, <laughs> an engineer, and a keep your scientist. Well, <laughs> hello, fellow nerd couple. Um, That's cool. That is cool. Fish is a dude on my bad. I'll change the pronouns immediately. Science HD is better than Bill Nye's pod. I thank you. I actually don't listen to his podcast, but I need to. He's, like, one of my favorite people on this earth. And don't worry. Um, but anyways, he's, like, one of my favorite. I wasn't worried. Bill Nye can beat me. <laughs> no. Um, but anyways, he's one of my favorites. He just, I don't know. He opened my eyes, so it's cool. Cool guy. Um, also, if you want to hear my uh, theme song, we're about to end this. And we're about to end it to the theme song. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in. If you have a catchphrase that we could say at the end of these streams that sound cool, please let me know. I know Gas and Burn had a submission. Science rules is already taken. But Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't think of anything. I never can. Yeah. So um, if you have anything, just let me know. Submit it. And uh, that is Science HD. Who did the Geico post? <laughs> yeah. Wait, we will. Hold on. <laughs> Um, so yes, here's the theme song again that I'm going to roll at the end. Thank you, thank you. This is the best episode that we ever had. It was so much fun. James Webb, baby. Here's a look at our geode that we cracked open live. Go to YouTube's for the replay. That's going to stay there forever in life. 
Okay. All right. I love you all. I'm so bad at goodbyes. You just got scientifically served. Ready? Mm -hmm.